2550, but that's not what he bought. What he bought has that ability to go down that road, and that, that's the case. Yeah. So we could block it, but we'd be doing something illegal at that point. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions here? Please, come on up. Kevin Cook, Section 2. Has anybody talked to Mr. Ho about where his intentions are, maybe talk to him personally or directly with him, that kind of get a lay of the land? Yeah. Adam, you want to speak to that? Adam's met with him multiple times. Um, I have. And latest update um, was probably from several weeks ago, um, and we we'd pushed that. I think we actually talked about the May 6th open meeting and that his intent was to build or to refurbish some of those cabins uh, in kind of a model home type scenario and that he'd come in and say, I'd like package A, B, C, or D, whatever it is. Uh, his target community was the uh, snowbirds in his term. Um, so I know that he is in fact um, in the process of refurbishing some of those. Um, I haven't talked to him for a while, to be quite honest. Um, my concern is that we're, he's going to get to the point before we do, and he's going to say, Adam, let's talk about this access easement agreement. And he's not going to like what we have to say. And at this point, we have no legal standing in that. We don't own the property, any of those things. And as Bill had mentioned previously, the last thing we want to do is negotiate this three-way party when Silverleaf really doesn't have a vested interest in this. They're trying to get out of East Texas and move on and do those things. Um, so we're better served kind of sitting where we are Let's sit tight, let's monitor, let's observe, let's get this deal closed, um, and then we actually have some authority to negotiate it. Yes, sir, come on up. John Ward, section one. Uh, is there any, any possibility or reason to uh, maybe negotiate with Mr. Ho for those nine acres so we could get them back? So that was an immediate conversation, right? Once we found out that happened and he, and he closed, Adam did approach Eric on exactly that point and wasn't willing to just give it to him. Um, it, you know, down the road, if he can't find a use for it uh, or, you know, wants to move it, he could sell it to us. But it would be an acquisition at this point. Uh, well, but we've had the conversation. It could be part of the negotiation. Uh, so, you know, if he wants all things are. If he wants something, then maybe he gives something. You know, I think it's a great point, and I think it, at least from my view, it's going to be very important that we create a really good relationship with this guy, right? Um, you know, we could we could throw rocks at him, right? We could say, you know, no on everything, uh, and make this really hard. I'd recommend we start with, let's try to create a relationship with the guy. Let's see what we can get. And maybe there is a pony in it. Maybe there's something he wants that would be easier on him and he's willing to give that up. But until you get the relationship and you get things going. So Adam started with you know, riding around on the golf cart, looking at all the things and how we interact and talking about the ranch and talking about, you know, the folks here really want to maintain the, the look and feel of this. And so one of your immediate concerns is, well, what, you know, as everybody complains because you didn't mow the grass over there, right? Does he share our thoughts on making this look like, like it does? So there's been conversations to try to say, hey, let's not spoil the beauty of what's going on out here, okay? Um, in words, he seems to be uh, on board with that. But again, at this point, it's, it's just words, right? Uh, but I think it is in our best interest to try to play nice uh, at this point, and then you know, if we end up in a different place later, then we'll we'll deal with that. Okay. It's all been good questions. Anybody else? Come on. Now let me toss in the other half of dinner. <laughs> Whatever section that is. <laughs> uh, Dennis reminded me that on the nine acres. On the bright side, less taxes, and who's going to do something with that land? It looks pretty worthless to me. Let him have it. Yeah, it's uh, it it is in fact downstream um, from. Uh, so the 
as Adam explained, here's the emergency spillway. So uh, were the water to come this way, it comes down here and, and, and heads down here. So this is effectively flood zone, right? So he's not gonna put a you know, 40 foot high rise up there. Um, and, and the question is, what could he do with it? So at this point, I don't know. I mean, he's not sure what he's gonna do with the whole thing yet. But um, you know, might there be an opportunity to carve off you know, something there? I don't know. But it's, it's not something that's gonna be as valuable to him as some of the other areas. I think that's where that tennis court is down in that yep, lane. It is. Um, Dave Evans, section four. Uh, change the subject a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just started researching this uh, three years ago, and Robert and Lee still seem to have ownership of some property he does. within the land that's boundary. He does. Um, so that's still true. Okay, yep. that, that is true. In, in, fact, in fact, he owns that emergency spillway. Yes. He owns some other land, too. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what all he owns. But, 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 but that's but there's not there's no significant parcels that he transferred to Silverleaf somehow or something happened. No. Not not that are part of this. And and you know, there's always the question: Is he in the middle of this deal? And no, is the answer. <laughs> okay, there we go. Mr. Springer. Well known. Well known. <laughs> Springer section four. I, I'm all for the purchase of the common area. Mm -hmm. And this is not simply a yes or no vote. Do we uh, obtain that or do we not obtain that? Okay. It seems like it's not just a simple yes or no. Do we do, we do the deal with the common areas? I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of unanswered questions. So in layman's terms, so that we can understand what are we really voting for? Well, I'll let other folks chime in here, but in, in my mind, what we're voting for is we've come to a contractual agreement with Silverleaf to acquire those common areas described in that exhibit. So specifically, you're saying we should do that, yes, or we shouldn't do that, no. From my, from my view, that's well, what it is. I'm saying yes, that we need to do that, but mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many unanswered questions ahead. There's now, are we prematurely voting on this? or so Well, what? I've, in my view, based on the questions that have come up, a whole lot of, there's a lot of questions, and I could be wrong here because I don't want to read anything into your, your comment there, but I think a lot of the questions are around the resorts as opposed to the common areas. I could be wrong. But it just seems that a lot of the questions that come up are, is he going to mow his grass? And what are we going to do with this amenity use? And they're all great questions, but they're not specifically about the common areas, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? So, and but I may be misreading what you're asking. Yeah. Let me reconstruct it. <laughs> uh, the thing is, if his people have access, mm -hmm. what's going to keep them from off the ranch? So there's yep. what's going to keep them from getting on the road and going anywhere they want to get on there and, and, and walk. So the, the thought is there's two scenarios. One is let's say they, they all buy into amenity use, right? They say, yep, I'm going to pay $159 or whatever it, it turns out to be based on the scenario, right? Then they would come through the gate. They would get, you know, whether it's a tag or an RFID, just like we do, and they would in fact be able to roll all over the ranch, right? If they said, no, we're not gonna do that, then we've gotta at least put something up in the way of gates. That's what I was talking about earlier. Maybe it's Greenbrier Trail, we put one over there, maybe we put one at the dam, I don't know, right? But it's gonna be difficult is the answer. You got East Holly in there on one side, and people with houses are on the other side. We are a gated community. But we have 10 miles of unsupervised fencing. We don't even have a monitor there. Fair, fair point. I mean, you can go down 3550 and walk right into the ranch. Are we secure? Are we secure in this? No. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Right. Springer. Anybody else? No other questions. All right. Okay. Question. Oh, <laughs> not so fast. I'm going to phrase this. 
I'm going to phrase this as a question. I don't know how the board of this ranch got lucky enough to appoint these people to do this job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to agree that was a really good question. <laughs> okay, so your ballots, if you have not received them, you should be receiving them shortly. I did receive mine yesterday. They are green. We use the green paper just because to make sure it's different from the other election you'll be hearing about in, in the near future. Um, so please get your, your ballots in. Sign them. You must sign it and date it, and, and you can either mail it back in to the address on the ballot, or you can drop it off right up here at administration during regular business hours. There is a ballot box right by the, uh, the counter. So thank you all for coming. And again, if you have any questions you think of tonight when you get home, just email them to ontheranch at hollylakeinfo.com. Thank you. Thanks for coming.